I've fallen in love with my voice in a whole new way. We just got to make sure that you uh, can make your microphone work through our calls because I can, you're like whispering into your microphone because your voice probably sounds good, but I'm like barely hearing you. Oh, I have to, I guess I'll have to just lean closer lean to really, my really close iMac. Up. I can uh, see my... your pores. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Welcome. You are entering a strange realm, a realm of what ifs. What if movies, television shows, and video games were better, worse, bizarrer, or downright different? What might they look like? Find out on today's episode of Cinecasters! Hello, and welcome to Cinecasters, the show where we watch movies and talk about them, deconstruct them, and try to rework them and figure out what's working, what isn't working, and... Yeah, try to be use our imagination to come up with our own version of what we think this movie could have been. I know that sounds very pretentious, and it is, but um, it's just a fun way to talk about movies, really, is ultimately what it is. It's, it's also I a way, because... Am... Go on, go, go ahead. On. Oh, that, well, that's it. I was just going to say, I'm Nate Draper, and <laughs> I, I'm, I'm joined... <laughs> I'm DeJangles the Strange. I'm DeJangles. But the reason that I brought that up is because it does sound pretentious, but it's a way to get around this idea of like, oh, this movie is quote unquote bad and we want to make it better, right? It's There's no such thing as bad art, right? It's just art. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't be critical about things that we thought were working for us versus things that weren't working for us. So that's why we have this pretentious intro. Exactly. I mean, part, exactly. That's, and I think I'm glad you brought that up because it's not about we're not doing movie reviews to say like oh we think this movie's great and here's why and these movies bad and here why we we want to talk about it in a more nuanced way and try to really look at like the mechanics of what's making something work and try and figure out it's almost more of like, a like yeah. a writing uh exercise than it is an actual like movie podcast for sure for yeah. sure i would i think that's exactly what it is yeah. um so for this week's writing exercise it's the movie Limitless, yeah. starring Bradley Cooper, directed by Nicholas Berger. Neil I know the last Berger. Name is Berger. Neil Berger. Neil Berger. And yeah, here's the thing. Here's the thing. We've actually done a lot of Neil Berger movies on Wait, Cinecasters. We have. We have. I know we've done one. I know we've done at least one. What are the other ones? The first. What's the one that you think we did? Um, the Illusionist. We did the Illusionist, right? So that one is yes. actually up on the channel on the Cinecasters Classics. It's so it's been re-uploaded. We also last year, Alyssa and I did a whole series, Cinecasters series on Divergent. Oh, that's right. And he that one's not I, up on I the channel yet. It'll come. That. But he directed ah. the first movie and then produced the um, uh, like executive produced and produced the uh, the rest of the whole series. What's interesting about this, actually, about these these three movies that we've covered, is that I actually think Divergent is like the most cohesive of the three movies that he's done or that okay. we've covered. I, you, so I actually have not seen Divergent. I'm not actually. surprised by that, but it, it's just interesting because, like, okay, like just to get into it. Everybody, I had never seen Limitless before. Had you? I have. I, I saw it a long time ago. I think I saw it pretty close to when it came out. I saw okay. it probably after it was released on DVD and yeah. I could go to the video rental store because that was it. still yeah. a thing in 2011 and yeah. rent it on DVD. But anyway, I have seen it before. Yeah, because everyone I knew was saying like, oh, this movie's so cool and it's like tries some cool stuff and it's like very, very smart. I did not think this movie was really all that smart at all. And I did not think that this movie was particularly engaging. I was bored. That's so interesting. Huh? And I, I'm so, not usually bored ahead. by even by bad movies. In fact, I find like quote unquote bad movies, like we're talking Sharknado or The Room, movies that are like watching a train wreck. I'm entertained by that. This movie wasn't a bad movie by any means, but it was. I was bored by this movie. It was so middling. And, and I have a reason for that, but I want to hear your thoughts first. So, okay, so I remember when I first watched it thinking, okay, this is interesting. 
I was I wouldn't I wasn't bored by it, and this time I wasn't bored by it either. I actually think I, interestingly enough, I think I appreciated it more this time than my than my first viewing. I remember my first viewing actually being kind of disappointed by it because I remember hearing the same thing. People mm-hmm. were saying like, "Oh yeah, you gotta watch this movie. It's so good. It like moves. And it's got such great pacing. It's got great dialogue. It's so fun to watch." And I remember being like, "Oh, you know, it's okay," but I didn't think it was. The, you know, people were talking about it like it was the next. I don't know, Raging Bull. And I was like, I, you know, it's not really that. Yeah, this time like, watching it's, it's, it, it's such a mind fuck. It's like Inception, and I was like, oh, okay, it is not. <laughs> no, it's definitely not. Uh, but I actually do. I actually did enjoy watching. I found it entertaining. I thought the pacing was actually pretty good. Um, I do have some specific things that I uh, I did I do think brought it down. Mm-hmm. But overall, I actually thought there were some. I think it's a case where there are ideas it's kind of like with um equilibrium there are things that are there yes, if you look I would for agree them with that yeah and you go like okay there's this and there's this because the one thing i was thinking about this time now 10 years or so later after it's come out this would have come this would have been as part of that like post 2008 financial collapse so yeah, yeah there's a whole there is a bit of a comment on wall street and kind of this excess of wall street yeah, which i don't I think i picked up that. on the first time and so this time watching it i was going i was sort of thinking about it with that in mind and i mm-hmm. think there's all that's to say there's stuff that's there it just there's somehow there's like a thread weaving through it that's not that's just missing yeah for me the big thing for me i felt like um NZ, nzt the drug itself was this miracle drug that made his masculine like fantasy come to reality Oh, that's an interesting way to look at it. That's yeah, why okay. I, that's why this movie didn't connect with me is because I felt like this was uh, like you talked about like the sort of like masculine thing in Equilibrium when we did that movie. When when I was watching this movie, I felt like NZT, the drug or NZT because we're Canadian. Um, when <laughs> he took that, it was like and of course it causes new problems like he has like you know peddlers after him and thugs are after him and he's constantly trying to like like and it's done well he's constantly trying to like balance this this like life of creativity while keeping like his corruption drug thing on the download so he's balancing these two sort of lives at the same time but to me it was like he goes from being this sort of everyday slob writer to being this like i'm the absolutely greatest most prolific biggest penis masculine guy you know what i mean just because mm-hmm. and so yeah. to me it was just like this is just a, ma- a male fantasy trip except the drug is what is able uh, gives him the ability to be the biggest swing and dick on the block right it, it, exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like it, he takes it and he's like gets laid all the time yeah exactly he, he like as soon as he takes it as soon as he takes the pill he like winds up seducing his landlord's wife or whatever and you're just like like uh, that's the first thing you're gonna do with with this this drug that makes you like, but that's what, that's what tipped me off. That was why I was sort of like, ah, hmm. this is the male fantasy. This drug is the answer yeah, yeah. to all your impotence. If it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if like fixing erectile dysfunction or making your penis bigger was a side effect of taking NZT because it's just, it's just so that it's every part of this yeah. movie to me was like the, the part that it's really started getting interesting to me is I thought that when, I thought the trajectory of this movie was going to be about the book because he's a sci-fi author. Yeah, that was kind of a weird thing <laughs> yeah. where it kind of jumps away from that. All and of a sudden. so he's like the yeah. sci-fi author and he starts taking NZT and he's like going to build this whole universe. And I was like, I don't know where this is going, but I feel like it was hinging on the book, something to do with this book, the science hmm. fiction book. But then he, he like is like, then I started hanging out with my friends and we went to beaches and I'm so smart and I can do all this stuff. And now I have wealthy friends because I'm so influential. And he's like, then we went to like, they were in Monaco, I think. And he like jumps off the cliff just because he can. And then, he comes out of the water and he says like the voiceover says all of a sudden it was so clear i had a plan i knew what i needed to do but it was going to take money and i was like oh Mm -hmm. okay here are the new stakes for the movie this is where the movie's trajectory is going except he Mm -hmm. never tells us what the plan is yeah because i i'm assuming now in retrospect it was just to make a lot of money but because so this was my when i first heard him say it my thought was, because it'd been a while since I'd seen it, I thought where it was going was, oh, he's going to figure out how to make this stuff for himself. Mm-hmm. That would make sense. And I, in, fact, in fact, I was more surprised that he didn't do that sooner. Yeah. Like, um, like the story wasn't about making more NZT for himself. 
it's like if you're that smart you'd figure out look i'm not even on nzt and i'm watching the movie and i'm going hey doesn't he know he's gonna run out at some point yeah if i was as smart as this guy claims to be i would at least be able to think ahead and go oh shit i gotta make more of this stuff because i'm gonna run out I also thought that this movie was going to be smarter when when it became aware, like the plan thing pissed me off because the whole movie is sort of him. He needs to make a bunch of money, like a billion jillion dollars so that he can do something. But we don't know what that is. By the end of the movie, he's become senator for New York, it looks like. And it, yeah. it's like, great. So it, it appears that he wants to become the president, but we don't know what the plan is yet. We don't have stakes in the game because we know he wants to do something, but we don't know what that goal is. He wants to change the world. But how? Where? What are the stakes? Yeah. I don't understand. The other thing that I found um, kind of frustrating was that, that um, he uh, – oh, I lost it. Crap. Um, what were you just saying? What were you just saying? Oh yeah, I was saying. So um, I was actually going to say one. This reminded me. I, I'm, you're going to laugh. There's a Ted Chang sh- short story. <laughs> I love Ted Chang. I know. I have got to invoke the name of Ted Chang at some point whenever we do a sci-fi movie. Um, I can't remember what the title of the short story is, but it's actually very. I, as I was watching this movie, Limitless, it reminded me a lot of the short story where there's basically a guy. And now I'm the, some of the specifics, I'm blanking on some of the specifics, but he basically gets access to some kind of a chemical or some kind of a drug that basically makes him super, su- like superhuman. Mm-hmm. But the way it ends up, and I think part of why when I was watching this, I was thinking it's going to go in the direction of him trying to figure out how to make this and engineer this drug is because that's what essentially happens in the short story. Yeah. And it's sort of this guy, the short story, it, it's interesting because it's basically this guy's effort to maintain his position that he, you know, it, it ends up becoming his own undoing. This tragedy, but yeah. He, yeah, yeah. And I thought, and I think just think the way that sort of it's worked into the Ted Chang story mm-hmm, is just, mm-hmm. I don't know, there's something that's kind of like Shakespearean yeah. about it, right? Where I, it's I, like, I you, thought it was. You dig yourself into your own hole by yes. trying to dig yourself out of it. I thought it was interesting that this movie chooses to make Eddie into the hero at the end, because to me, it mm-hmm. felt like all the stuff that he was doing was underhanded, that it had to be his undoing. Like this, to me, this sort of screamed the ending had to be a tragedy. Yeah, that's that's where I thought it was going too, yeah. and I was kind of disappointed that he was like, "Oh wait, what?" He's able yeah, to he just kind of go like, on, and that's why I think this is a male. He didn't learn anything. And take yeah, he, take a pill and you become the greatest thing ever, right? If you insert Viagra and sex, then you wind up with like literally the a miracle pill. You know what I mean? Like it's that's yeah. what this movie is to <laughs> me. That's what it is to me. One of the things that I was really disappointed with was the idea that it's Eddie's hubris. That like he's like got this meteoric rise. He's going to be the best thing ever. I think it would have been interesting if they introduced another character who was on NZT but had been taking it longer than Eddie, and that he and that that, that this um this person um we don't find out that they've been on NZT until the end, and the reason oh, okay. and the reason that like we get to play with this is because he's so smart like he's so smart that he the trick is to make sure that nobody can else can figure out he's on nzt and that's what mm-hmm. makes him so powerful right right because because eddie never figured it out but but this guy is so smart because he was like i saw your meteoric rise the only thing that could that could have caused that meteoric rise was if you, if you were on nzt i never had a meteoric rise i played it carefully i the whole way i made it look like i was just lucky i made it look like and that's what right. made me smarter your downfall was your hubris you thought you could change the world because you all of a sudden were on nzt it's like no man nobody wants to change the world you got to keep the status quo because that's what keeps me rich that's what keeps me right you know what i mean you thought you had all the cards you thought you no man i've been doing this much longer than you and i made it look like i wasn't on nzt that's why i won yeah yeah exactly and yeah. that's that's the tragedy so you know what i mean that's the tragedy of he thinks it's his own hubris is right you know it's icarus literally mm-hmm. yeah exactly i mean so many of those th- those stories where it's a character who by their own hubris like lawrence of arabia is you know very yeah. similar it's someone who gets grandiose ideas and then they end up falling as a result of it yeah 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 i also thought um, that um de niro in this movie was mm-hmm. uh kind of a waste interesting i mean i thought he was good like he i actually good, thought the performances were overall good he doesn't but. do a lot in this movie though no that's true i mean i think i think that was a big disappointment too i i it's interesting that you so that 
the, that idea that that you had of him actually having been on NZT the, yeah, whole, time. the whole time and that's why he won I, yeah. I, I was thinking that I thought that's where it was going to yeah, I thought at the very end it's, he's gonna be like yeah so I'm 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 NZ I'm the NZT guy and uh, I've been playing uh, yeah, you for a fool you, I've been playing exactly. I thought I thought that's where I was going to. That seemed like a logical conclusion, and I was kind of surprised at the end when he just kind of it's like, oh yeah, well I figured out a way to you know yeah, hack yeah. it and inject it in my bloodstream so it doesn't you know I don't crash anymore. It's like oh what? Yeah. How, how come now? Okay, Why can't yeah, you like, figure that out before? So stupid. Um, what I what I also uh, uh, now you did say like both. Um, Bradley Cooper and De Niro, both like the acting is fine. I, I have no problem with their acting. I think the acting is good. It I is think really all good. of the acting yeah. is actually very good. I will yeah. actually say that I think my favorite parts of this movie are when De Niro and Bradley Cooper are like, it's just the two of them playing off of each other because right. the dialogue is fast. The acting is believable. And I'm like, this movie almost should have been like the two of them in a room playing mind games with each other over who's got the drugs. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like that, that would have been an interesting movie of like s- the smartest people in the world trying yeah. to like one step ahead of each other. Especially because you've got this like old guy who, who is like, you know, tried and true. And we don't know he's on NZT. We don't know he's the NZT guy, but you know, he's the tried and true. He's the, the old one. He's knows all the mistakes. He's got all the big experience. He's played the game and we've got this new upstart who's like coming in, making waves, making big moves. And we play the two of them off of each other. And it doesn't even have to be like them locked in a room. It could easily just be like them in a boardroom or a courtroom or something like that, where we're watching the two of them play off of each other. And it's like, uh, it's a chess match, except we're watching them try to one up each other. And who's got all the cards. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like, I don't know, something like Catch Me If You Can, where you got these yeah. two people who are engaged in this kind of like game of like, who's going to be able to outsmart the other one? But there's first. this like mutual respect at the same time. Yeah. Like in Catch Me If You Can, exactly. there's, there's like this, 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 um, even though he knows if he gets caught, he's screwed. DiCaprio's character is constantly like, you almost had me. Like, yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's the thrill yeah, of the exactly. chase. Like, he wants to get caught because the closer he gets to getting caught, the more the thrill is when he escapes. But it's also, there's a respect there. Mm-hmm, exactly. And, Especially yeah. isn't from the Tom Hanks character who's yeah. kind of, like, trying to figure this guy out as yeah. he's tr- also trying to catch him. Yeah, and so we get this, like, sort of weird mutual respect while they... The other thing, the the, the one that I was going to go to, the example, was um, in V for Vendetta, when V sort of sets up the detectives who are trying to figure out who he is, but along the way right. he leads them to the actual mystery. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the end, the detectives are like, well, we could arrest V, but also like now we have these whole clues and there's this respect there. He's still a criminal, but there's this respect. And that's what I felt like we needed here. We needed this, like, who's going to come out on top when they both really, really like respect each other. They see what each other's made of, but we don't, we as the audience don't see all the cards until they're on the table. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, I kind of thought that's in my pitch. I, I tried to do something like that too. Oh, I took my pitch um, in a very different I, direction. Yeah. Well, well, there's another thing too in the movie at Limitless as it currently is that I thought was kind of a, a bit of a departure from where it was going was after Vernon gets killed. I thought it was even though he's not close to Vernon. I kind of felt like there was like a lingering murder mystery that never. And got I know it, like it. It does get solved. It does eventually get sort, so, of. sort of. It sort of gets solved. But I kind of felt like. Well, then when he minute, starts I, losing time, there's like another mm-hmm. murder that comes up. Right. And, and to me, it was not like, even. It's not even relevant. It's like, why bring up another murder? It would have made been more interesting if like he started losing time. And then when they ask him questions like, where were you this night? And he's like, I don't know. I can't answer that question. And then it sort of becomes like, like we as the audience might be like, wait, was he losing time? Did he actually kill Vern? You know what I mean? You could play with this right. this unreliable narrative because we saw him lose time. But and you could even go one step further if you wanted to do an inception and start playing with the magic of filmmaking. The way yeah, that a film yeah, cuts exactly. at certain points, right? And you play it like, you know, and then and then all of a sudden I found myself there and it cuts and it moves to the next scene. And then all of a sudden you find out that the reason it cut is because Bradley Cooper's character, Eddie, has been losing time, and we haven't been privy to what's happening because we're only a bit, we're only cognizant when he's cognizant or conscious, right? Yeah. And so we all yeah, of a sudden, exactly. at the end of the movie, we can put these pieces in place, and it's like, oh fuck, like did he do it? Didn't he do it? Like that sounds like a mind trip. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is kind of like this movie about drugs, almost 
almost it should have been. Yeah. Like yeah. that's another direction it could have gone. But I, cause I think it was one of those things. It didn't occur to me until afterwards. And I started going back and thinking about it. I, I that actually I'd forgotten about that other murder, that random murder yeah. that really, what it does is it serves to get his jacket in the hands of his lawyer. So his lawyer can take the drugs from his jacket. Mm-hmm. That's ultimately, that's ultimately what it does. It's not a, there's nothing ever really that's revisited about it. The consequences of did he kill her? Didn't he kill her? How he feels about that? Like in the moment, he's like, oh, did I kill someone? But that's, it is very quickly brushed aside. Yeah. But then that, but that's why I was also thinking about like, well, I do think there's a bit of a, there's some kind of a thing here going on with people who are really wealthy, people who are on Wall Street. Like they mm-hmm. use substances to keep themselves going. This is yeah. a, like, a, like a more extreme version of that, but this is something that happens. And they do shit like this. They, yeah. they, go and they abuse women and they get lawyers and they get off scot-free yeah and they get off scot-free so, but that's what that's not what this movie is about because it wants us to root for eddie so that he can like mm-hmm. change the world with whatever his mysterious plan is because i almost would have been more down if eddie was this like despicable character who gets himself in this shit and then because then you're like oh this is literally a movie about like the wolf of wall street it's a movie about terrible people yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think because Bradley Cooper is someone who is, I think, just inherently charismatic, it mm-hmm. could have still gone that way and you still would have gone along with it. Yeah, and you would have been like, well, like, he's our hero, but he's also, like, a terrible person. I'm thinking of something more recently like Uncut Gems. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, he's just, yeah, Uncut Gems is is kind of funny because he's like, y- you you feel sorry for the guy, but you also are like, you're you're kind of like, you're putting your head in your hands and you're going, oh, no, come on, just stop, just you yeah. just stop now, if, but you also want him. You want him to w- succeed. Yeah, you're rooting for so him, much but you're also you're like, like every I, I, mistake I, I'm is kind another. of shaking my head right now. But I hope you do it. I really yeah. hope you make it, pull it off. That's, every mistake is another like like um, piece of fuel in the fire. You know what I mean? You just you're like I want yeah. you to do this, but you keep making all the wrong moves. <laughs> exactly. It's yeah. like you should have given up. So I think it would have been ago. I think it would have been interesting yeah. if Eddie was this if if Neil uh, Br- sorry Bradley Cooper played this really charismatic character um mm-hmm. but is essentially a bad guy and in the end you realize like hang on a second like even though I was rooting for Bradley Cooper's character was he the villain the whole time like the way he abuses women the way he you does stuff with stocks the way he abuses drugs and all of a sudden you're like well, I was cheering for the bad guy this whole time Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like it's one of those things where I mean, I, I, I personally do appreciate it when movies are willing to kind of take you into that psychological space of mm-hmm. someone who's very, let's say, like complicated like that. Yeah. Um, like so yeah we'd mentioned i'd mentioned raging bull before but that's an example of a guy you're you're watching robert de niro play this boxer and you're going this guy is like he's he's quite a brutal person Mm. but i still feel really like sort of oddly like i'm invested in him but i'm also at odds with what he's doing and the way like american uh, uh, um yeah american psycho american psycho yeah there you go yeah except without the business or nightcrawler yeah, yeah Nightcrawler, Nightcrawler with yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal. You're like, this guy is just, he is manipulative and he's, but it's, I'm also very intrigued yeah, about I'm what's going like on. Like attached in this weird way to this character. Weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do want to go over. gems. Yeah. I do want to go over some good stuff. I did think, um, apart from when they do like the infinite zoom in, that hurt my eyes. I was like, don't do that, guys. <laughs> like it doesn't I, do anything. I was, um, I, I there was a part of me that thought it was cool and also because i watched it on a pretty big tv i, okay, I also yeah. had a very similar i had a similar i had a, i had mixed feelings about it on one yeah. hand i was like oh this is kind of cool it is and cool like, okay, and then they no. do it for too this long and you're like much. my this, eyeballs yeah. <laughs> stop stop yeah. <laughs> yeah uh but i will say that i did like the filter change that they used uh between when um eddie is on nzt versus when he's not like the camera becomes mm, much brighter, yeah. the colors become much brighter, yeah, and it's yeah, it's, yeah. it's actually I think um, uh, Bradley Cooper is a very handsome gentleman because when he's on NZT, NZT, um, the colors light up and you can see like the very deep shade of blue in his eyes. Mm-hmm. Whereas when he's not on NZT, everything is kind of a bit more grayscale, mm-hmm. and his his eyes don't pop, and that's that's just something I noticed because Bradley Cooper is a very handsome gentleman. But um, I do think that there there is this uh, this kind of um, uh, interesting 
filter change. The thing that I didn't like is that when he's on NZT, sometimes they use a fisheye lens. Oh, see, that's interesting. I actually thought that was an interesting transition choice. I, I, I didn't hate it. I just thought like the filter change was was sort of enough to indicate that that his perception had changed. Um, whereas the fisheye lens made it made me feel like he was drunk. Oh, interesting. See, like maybe I drunk with power is a good analogy, as, but interesting because I interpreted that as like his vision, like his field of view is expanding, and oh, he's he's okay. able to see so much more around him. Yeah, um, maybe, maybe so I was I, just going with like yeah. I guess shorthand, like f- f- cinematography or, or cinematic shorthand, where you have like oftentimes when they use fisheye lens, it's it's for like to convey drunkenness i guess but right yeah or some kind of like di- like dis disassociative state of mind yeah or like euphoria or or dizziness yeah. or something like that yeah but whereas i like yeah, i don't think you're wrong like i also don't think i'm wrong i think maybe the point was that he is on some kind of like is on a drug right so his field of vision becomes mm-hmm. hyper realistic like a fisheye lens yeah yeah exactly i just thought the camera filter change did that already we went from really really bleak colors to all of a sudden like warm tones and mm-hmm. light yeah it's it, yeah like it's 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 conveyed quite like quite well like and i that was another thing i made too i thought i thought some of the images were very creative mm. and i i it, maybe you could argue it's a little obvious okay fine it's a hollywood movie it's not supposed to be subtle no but i think even like i think even just on the there's a scene where he's like trading stocks and there's number he looks up to his ceiling yeah. and the tiles flip over i thought oh I thought that's that was a cool. really interesting that was creative. yeah that's a really interesting way to sort of convey that idea yeah. um there was a lot of little things throughout the movie that i th- like that that i really appreciated or and even those, when he like i think those were really what made the movie for me anytime yeah. he like him or or uh, at one point when his girlfriend takes the pills they like see themselves all of a sudden like the first time mm. they take it they're like differentiated yeah. from themselves and they uh, the camera will often show him doing like it'll show him more than one eddie on screen like as he's doing something because it, it shows like this kind of like this is where his brain is at his brain is moving so fast it's like his body can't keep up i did like that i thought that was pretty cool um mm-hmm. but that brings well, I'm me thinking- go on I'm thinking of people who I've never done this, but people who have told me have done really intense psychedelic drugs Mm -hmm. have described this feeling of like being like separated from from their body body. and being able to like actually see, like see their body from outside. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of like, Oh, that to me was when I was watching it, I was thinking of that. Like, Oh, it's like, it's also this like, you're now able to step outside and see yourself on the yeah, inside. Yeah, like you have this super perspective of, of everything mm-hmm. that's going on. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's it's interesting. I do... Uh, the, the Some things that I thought were a bit hokey were everyone in this movie just sort of takes drugs without <laughs> knowing what it is. Like, specifically, I'm thinking of the Russian... And even Eddie at the beginning, the Russian, yeah, when he's like, way too trusting. Yeah. Oh, what do you have here? Yeah. Like, it's just a drug. Like, hmm, I wonder what it is. Like, if you're a gangster and there's a drug that you don't know what it is, if you're, you're not, gonna you're not it. just going to take it because it's going to be, it could be ecstasy. And plus, if you don't know what's in it and you don't know who, who's uh, peddling that drug, it could be cut yeah. with so much shit. Like gangsters are like the yeah. least likely people to take drugs. They don't know. Cause they know. Cause they exactly. know. Exactly. I thought the same thing too. And I just thought it was so funny. Like I kind of appreciated the camp of this Russian mobster. Yeah. It was just so like 1980s Russian movie, bad guy, like a communist or evil kind of trope. Yeah. And he I, just picks it up. He's like, what do you got the, here? Down the hatch. And then you're oh, like, yeah, just, yeah. It just no becomes a convenience asked. of plot. But for me, it was like, yeah. that's not how that works. Because the Russian gangster, if he's got anything to do with drugs, he's going to be like, yo, if this is acid, I'm going to be out for the next eight hours. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's like, it, like he assumed, I know, it's like, okay, if I looked at that, I would go like, it's probably like MDMA or yeah. something like that, where if I take it, I'm, you know, I, I want to be ready to just either have a good time or just bunker down yeah, somewhere because I'm going to be gonna super be, paranoid. Based on the fact that it's in pill form, it's going to be MDMA or uh, ecstasy or uh, acid. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So that you're not going to be functioning. There's certain functions you're not going to be able to perform as well. Yeah, man. You don't want to be there. on a street in the middle of nowhere, especially not if you're hunting down some dude who owes you money. Like you're that's yeah. fucked. This guy's got a, he's got a job to do, right? Yeah. 
He's got a hundred thousand dollars. He needs to get paid back. He's he's got to go fillet people or something. Yeah. You know, you can't do that when you're on MDMA. Yeah, that's, that's difficult. It's just not. It's not gonna happen. Yeah. So um, that really really bothered me. But the thing that really bothered me about this movie, because I was on board for most of it until, um, uh, I actually I even liked the come down. How there's like this like, um when you crash after taking NZT and uh, like there's consequences to it. And I was like, okay, I like this. I like this. He can't do this forever. Mm -hmm. There's clearly a risk involved. I like that. And then when he like starts crashing, he's like calls his girlfriend. She's like, you got, you got to bring me these pills. You got to bring me these pills. Mm -hmm. And then she takes them in the park and the only thing she can think of is to grab this little girl and you know, skate just <laughs> slash the guy across the face. I was like, you had me until that. That was your thought process. Let's use this little girl's skate to slash this guy across the face. That's not smart. That's not smart at all. You're supposed to. Oh, that was so. That brought me out of it. I think, and it was at that point I think, where I was like, I don't know if I can do this. I think they're trying to do something where it's like, oh, she thought that many steps ahead that they would both be in that exact spot that he would be j- at just the right distance from the. Oh, blade I got of the it. Skates. I got it. I understood. Yeah. It's just that's the like. Okay, I don't know if you ever watched the TV show Action Man growing up. No, I know what you're talking about. Okay, though. so there is a thing in Action Man that's sort of like he like calculates different things and then pulls off these amazing feats because his brain can just right. do that. And that's what I thought they were trying to do with this one scene in NZT. Uh, but or, or with NZT in this movie, and I was just like a skate, like it's it's just so hokey. Like you got to give me something. <laughs> like this is this is I think her name is Lindy. This is her one action sequence in the whole movie. Mm-hmm. This is her time to shine, right? Because right. other than that, she's basically just a character on screen who serves for the purpose of Bradley Cooper, Eddie Mora's um, sex fantasy, right? His male right, fantasy. Yeah, ex- so this exactly. is her one scene. So to me, this is like, hey, if you don't want to have this be a male fantasy, then you have to make sure your female character, your female lead has something to do here that's going to distinguish her from just being a lamp, right? Yeah. A sexy yeah. lamp, <laughs> which is an actual test. Yes. Um, <laughs> so instead, we have her do this really, really stupid thing with a skate, and it doesn't come across as badass. It comes across as hokey. And mm. I don't think that she is a a badass. Now, now I'm sitting here going, wow, okay. <laughs> in, all, in all your infinite wisdoms, that's what you came up with? Like, yeah. right. Maybe you should go back to being the lamp. I don't mean that, but you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 I know I know what you mean. Ugh. Yeah, I, it's, yeah, it's one of those weird things where you're... I don't think it's a terrible. I don't think it's a bad movie. Like I guess I, I don't like think I it's said, a bad I, movie I either. But there was yeah. there was I, there was a point in time where I got bored, and that was the moment with the skate where I was out of it. I was like, oh, "You lost me." And I now think, I'm I think not for invested. Me, I think I was still willing to persist from that point on. The part for me where I really rolled my eyes was at the very end when he basically says he basically like tells robert de niro oh he says oh that taxi is gonna crash into that truck and then of yeah because he you know, can the so- truck crashes into it somehow he can now, now he has like, predictive pre- knowledge yeah yeah exactly and it was specifically the point where he says oh i've figured out how to engineer this so i don't crash anymore and i, I that's where i threw my hands up and i went seriously yeah come on like at that's the very what end, i was being yeah. leading up to this guy does not deserve a way out yeah. i wanted him to suffer now Here's where we go, because you say at the very end, there's he's engineered this way. Here's where it gets mm. interesting, because there yeah. is a TV show sequel to this. I know. Yes, yes. A TV show sequel that I happen to have seen all of. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I haven't seen any of it, because I, s- I wasn't a huge fan of the, show, the movie, so I kind of skipped on the show. I have seen all of the TV show, and I watched it because I binged it one week when I was bored um two summers ago three summers ago okay and uh, okay. I, it's not terrible my problem with it is i was expecting maybe something along the lines of like a movie about uh sort of very similar to what this this uh, or a tv show that was very similar to what this movie is about a guy who's dealing with drugs and and it's actually a police procedural oh that's so so do, do they do nzt in it or are they yeah like so catching people basically this guy does nzt 
and he starts like you know becoming super smart much like eddie and he gets um a job with the fbi because nobody is immune to nzt right people who take it wind up crashing right okay okay except for eddie mora who's actually in the show oh he shows up and every month or so um, the character, the main is it character, Bradley Cooper. Yeah, it is Bradley Cooper. It's Bradley Cooper. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Every month okay. or so, um, this the main character has to get an injection, otherwise the NZT will start to rot his mind. The way it does in the movie. Interesting. So basically, it never really explains, but there's like Eddie Mora wants him to be a part of the FBI to like do something for him. So the main character is basically like helping them solve crimes by like taking NZD once a day and then going out and solving crimes and like learning as much as he can until his brain is super crazy. It's it's okay. It's it's weird to me that it's a police procedural. It's like why is that the direction yeah. you would choose to take this show? You have this great premise. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like I feel like I feel like to me a movie I was kind of expecting it to bear more similarity to was Requiem for a Dream. I haven't which is seen all Requiem about, for a Dream, but yeah. So Requiem for a Dream is all about different characters with different substance abuse issues ah. and they're all related to drugs. So yeah. the, so he so the main character is mother is taking all these weight loss pills and she has this very unhealthy relationship with pharmaceutical drugs. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. then the main character, they start dealing. I can't remember what drug it is, but they start, they start dealing. It might be cocaine or heroin. I always, Um, whenever somebody says a Requiem for dream, I, in my head, I always picture Kubrick's eyes wide shut, but I have no idea why. Oh, that's so funny. I mean, they're both, they're both pretty intense movies. I think I it's maybe just the visuals. Why. They're like, just like visually pleasing. Cause eyes wide they're shut. Very, yeah. very visually. Yeah, they're pleasing. very, they're very like the, they're very, the aesthetic in terms of how they're done visually is, yeah. is quite extraordinary. Like yeah. they are, they are very remarkable films just in terms of their visual use, yeah. their use of visual language. Yeah. I think we should get into some pitches. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. How's your pitch? Um, Mine's, I've tried to, I kind of kept it short, like sweet bullet points. I can kind of, you know, I can, I can go first. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying okay like my pitch one. is not, definitely not one of my better pitches. So I'm also okay. I don't think first, mine is so. either. Okay. Well, Whichever you prefer. I'll just go first okay, and get go it out it. of the way if you're okay with that. Okay. So one thing I actually thought watching this movie, I, I, so this is just a general thing and we may have talked about this before, but I generally feel like you can lose the first act of almost every movie it doesn't really do anything to explain. Like all it does is just like set up the setting. But I, I've personally come to really like shows and movies where I'm playing catch up and I'm going, what's going on? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I know what you're talking about, but I feel like in order to do that, you have to really know how to go right into the action. Cause the first act is usually a lot of setup. And I do think the setup is important. So and not that I disagree with you. I just think when you watch a movie that's done really well where you're playing catch up, it has to be done in a way that allows you to play catch up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. of course. Of course. I felt, I really felt like this movie, they could have gone the very first shot of the movie, I think should have been the, the shot where she puts the keys on the table and slides them across to him. Oh, yeah, for sure. I felt like that, because that to me is kind of setting up what the movie, I think, well, I think is what it was really what it, that that at least set up for me the idea that he's heartbroken and he's trying to win her back yeah and that's like his whole thing like yeah he was married once it didn't work out now he's trying to win her back so I, that shot just would have set i can just imagine that perfectly. because when you see the keys slide across the table like if that's your opening shot because this movie has credits too yeah if you just see the keys slide across the table and then it pans out and you see exactly what's going on immediately you're going like this is a breakup exactly like yeah. that that and it goes over he picks up the keys it's it goes keys and then it pans up to him and he says something like like i can't remember what he says but you know right away like yeah. okay she's breaking we up just know him. what happened yeah exactly and and so i think that just would have been a much more interesting way to draw an audience in yeah um anyway so you go from that he meets the brother-in-law he gets the and nzt and he's like, wow, this is amazing. So he goes back to, to get for more. He goes back to get more. It's just, it's a similar setup. And in this case, he finds Vernon's killed very much in the movie. And um, in my version, it's he's going to start by kind of trying to solve the murder a little bit more. So he's going to go, okay, someone tried to kill my former brother-in-law. 
But he does, he is able to get some of the drugs from Vernon's apartment and he does start taking them and he finds that he's like, he feels so good that he's able to, he finishes writing his novel um, and he's, he gets an advance on another novel. Uh, as he keeps doing investigation, he does find that Vernon was connected to a mob and there was some drug dealing and now Eddie's starting to get followed and he's also now, he also starts running out of NZT a lot sooner. And earlier on, he figures out that he's going to run out and he's got to figure out how to find more. Um, and so what he, he immediately, he tries to find it. He can't find it. So he decides he's going to try like making it on his own. But all of his experiments, none of them are successful. There's something he just can't quite get it right. Anyway, he's running out. He starts to crash, and he ends up in a hospital. Now, he, it happens early enough that he could still... This would be kind of like the point of no return, right? Like He has a choice. He can either give it up, or he can go back on it. And yeah. for a while, he actually does try to give up. He's like, okay, this is not healthy for me. I crashed hard. I ended up in the hospital. So he goes to rehab. He starts getting back together. He gets another, oh yeah, he has the advance for the novel. He's trying to write the next novel, but he just can't do it. And uh, in my version, he finds out through someone at the rehab program. Like he basically, he's been kind of vague as to like which drug he was on. And there's someone there who he's close to, who's basically like, oh, I know what you were using. You were using this thing called NZT, right? And so he gets him, can, he's like, I know where you can find it. And it's he takes him basically directly to the mob that killed uh, Vern. that that killed Vernon yeah. and basically what he just what the, but he is so desperate for it that he basically gives them all of his advance money Ooh. to get to get the yeah. drug and and so he's but now he's like okay I know who did it if I get the NZT I can prove they did it and I can finish writing my novel but he's completely broke he has no money but he has the drug and so he's able to like scrounge together a little pocket ch- change and he starts trading stocks um, to like to like make money yeah just in his apartment um but it ends up getting him in the job at like a trading on the trading floor of like a trading company and he ends up working there and that's just kind of like his day job so he's writing this novel he's working at a stock exchange (laughs) and he's trying to find evidence to prove that the mob killed his former brother-in-law anyway um oh and he's still trying to make nzt that's the other thing he's trying to figure out a way to make nzt on his own so he doesn't have to go back to the mob when he runs out um, but he f- comes up with another solution. If he can figure out who's, cause he's like, okay, someone's going to be making it for the mob. Maybe what I can do is I can make enough money as a trader that I can buy out. I can like basically buy the people f- away from the mob. Um, and then I'll have it and then they won't. And he, so he starts tracing it and he traces it to Hank Atwood. That's the guy in the movie with the, with the cane who ends up dying. Yeah who there's going to be part of this big merger with the Robert De Niro character. Anyway, he finds him. He finds it's his company. And he also finds that Atwood, the guy who runs the company, is like sick and dying. And the reason he's sick and dying is because he had his own supply, but he was cut off. And it turns out the supplier was Carl Van Loon, who's Mm. the Robert De Niro character, who's actually the guy who runs the trading company that he works for. And it turns out that many of the other traders who work with Eddie also take NZT. And they're also, so Carl Van Loon actually has set up this whole supply network that all of his traders work for because they perform better when they're taking NZT. Oh, so damn. Carl Van Loon's the guy who actually controls the supply. Damn. So, uh, and the reason it's still like an illegal drug is like he's basically set it up so that he's able to to control it and not only like his traders use it presidents use it business leaders use it world leaders use it and they are all he has them all in his pocket because he is the one person who has access to this drug and he Damn. supplies it to all of them so basically eddie finds this out and he's like he's gonna break this he's gonna make everybody like know about this but basically he can't because if he does he's lost nzt Our oh, van loon's shit. gonna like take him off the nzt yeah. so basically he basic and and Van Loon takes it too, so Eddie's going to stay close to him. And it's at this time that he also discovers that Van Loon actually had Vernon killed. It was Van Loon's orders that got Vernon killed because Vernon had some, and he started selling it on the side. Ooh. And and so Van Loon's like, no, you can't do that. So he had him killed, and he got the mob. So this is it's one of these things where you go like. 
you you realize like oh everything's connected yep. but it's all this one guy van loon you know but the way i do it too is you don't know if it's this guy who's just tripping so much that yeah if he that he's like imagining it like it sounds kind of too, crazy, too crazy. But, like it's all so so connected that it's like too good to be true but it's it's yeah yeah yeah, that's really interesting like i didn't sort of scene i didn't sort of scene where where uh his ex-girlfriend comes back and it's like the guy and the the meme that everyone knows of the guy from it's always sunny in philadelphia where he's got all the the things (laughs) posted up on the wall yeah it'd be like that silvio yeah exactly it'd be like it'd be like that scene of course you'd be watching the movie the whole long and you're like oh this guy's got it right and she walks in and she's like Eddie, like, n- no, this, mm-hmm. you, you, you've got this it all nuts. wrong. And yeah. he's like, no, 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 no. I've got it. Anyway. So basically in the end, like he can't, he can't prove it. Like he's just, he just sounds like a crazy guy. Person, and, yeah. and if he keeps and Van Loon's like, no, like Eddie, leave it alone or I'm going to take you off NZT. So anyway, then we go 12 months later. And Eddie is now running for senator and he's taking the drugs. And it's essentially the same scene that we have, except Van Loon comes by. And this time the implication is that like Van Loon's got him in his pocket and Van Loon set him up to get there. And Van Loon's basically like, hey, you remember that guy? You remember when you went into drug rehab and there was this guy who like said, hey, you know, I uh, like I want to help you out. Yeah, I put him there. I wanted I you to be them. here. Yeah, I, wanted, I wanted I wanted you to be here because oh, I believed that you'd be. So what you realize is that like Eddie, the, all of this had been orchestrated by, by somebody Van on NCT. Loon. Oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, that's good. That's, that's it. Yeah, that's really good. I just like Thank the entire you. time he's playing catch up to somebody who is uh, who's way smarter than him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and runs the and he runs the show. Yeah, I like that also exactly. because it winds up being a guy who runs stock investments and banks who winds up having everyone in his pocket, like exactly like the way it is in real life. <laughs> exactly, yeah. it's kind of like, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't believe it's necessarily like that simple, but it's also kind of you know, it's one of those things. If you're ever gonna do a movie where you go like you just take it to that extreme, I felt like this was it. Where yeah, it's like this the was guy the yeah. who runs the stock company who owns everything is also the guy who owns the drug company. Yeah, you know, it just and, seemed yeah. like that was where it should go to. Yeah, and I also like the idea on drugs, so you can just go that direction. I, I also like the idea that that um the o- the only reason that people are powerful is because they're on NZT. Like smart mm-hmm. people, like scientists and politicians and and business people, they're not actually any different than you or i the only reason mm-hmm. is that they're on nzt which means that they're in van loon's pocket yeah exactly yeah. and the way and what i would do i was like oh it'd be really cool if you could like get all these stock shots of like world leaders like you know like taking aspirin yeah but you would like cut it together so it looks like they're popping nzt and yeah. then put it in into this montage and it's like oh shit obama's on nzt, obama's on NZT. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 then that's that's cool yeah um I really like that. That's way better than my pitch. Damn it. Oh, <laughs> um, I'm sure. No, so, I'm sure yours is great. Uh, uh, so in my, in my, we start, we're introduced to Eddie. Eddie is a science fiction writer who write, wrote a few chapters of a book, maybe two years ago and uh, sent it to an editor. And the editor was like, yes, here's your book deal. Right. So after being kind of aimless all through college, he finally feels like his life's on the up and up. He's moved to New York to spend, to be with a girl that he wants to, you know, he's really trying to pursue and everything in Eddie's life is looking up for the first time, except for the fact that Eddie hasn't written a single word in over a year. And, and he just can't seem to get it. He's constantly procrastinating. He's finding excuses for why he can't write, you know, when his girlfriend's at home, he can't focus. But when he's at, when she's at work, he misses her. So he can't focus. He, the cleaning lady is constantly like making noise and whatnot. And so he's like, there's constantly something in his way. Something is always wrong. So one day Eddie goes to lunch with his girlfriend, Lindy. And she basically says, she's like, look, you need some kind of motivation. You're very intelligent. Your book is is awesome, but you need some kind of motivation. So I'm not gonna break up with you, but I need to, we are, we're gonna go on a break. And she hands him his keys back. We're gonna go on a break, and he's like, "Well, break bre- break is just like a thing for a like a nice way of saying you're breaking up with me." And she's like, "No, I think you just need motivation. If you can get something done, whenever you get it done." Call me and I'll meet you immediately. But you got to have something, Eddie. You can't just be roaming around aimlessly. And so she's like, okay. And he's like, oh, you're breaking up with me. And he feels like he basically calls her a coward for breaking up. She's like, no, no, no. You'll figure it out. 
So a day or two later, Eddie has a meeting with his editor and he explains that, you know, oh, my girlfriend just broke up with me. So I haven't really been in the mood for writing and that you can see that the editor is basically losing patience that she doesn't have any pages. Um, she basically chews him out and he's like, oh, my fucking editor, like whatever. So he goes to get a drink. And while he's at the bar, he comes across his ex-girlfriend's brother, Vern. A bad news kind of guy who used to sell drugs, but he's like on the up and up. He's wearing a suit, like it's expensive. He seems like he's got his life together. And they basically catch up over a drink. And Vern explains, he's like, look, the reason I got my life turned around is because of this little pill called NZT. And Eddie's like, look, I'm not interested in doing any drugs. Like my college days are over. And he's like, no, nah, this isn't that kind of drug. It's It was basically, it's not an addictive drug. It was an experimental drug that was basically made to try and be a replacement for Ritalin. To help kids focus. and But it works way better. Okay, and now it, it's like so much better than Ritalin that it's basically on the DL. But it doesn't always work. So they're t- still testing it. They can't put it out on the market because it works for some people. It doesn't work for other people. But give it a shot. And he's like, here's a free sample. It fell off the back of a truck. That's how I can get it. But here's here's a free sample. Take it. Try the, the drug. And then we'll see how it goes. Like, you, you know, you know where to find me. So Eddie's skeptical, but he's desperate. So the next day he wakes up and he takes the pill and immediately he starts to feel motivated. He sits up down his computer and just starts writing. And before he knows it, he's through several chapters of his book and he's even reworked some of the first chapters of his book to make them like fit better. So he's like, but he's still motivated. He has a rush of energy. So he cleans his whole apartment, looks up how to make like a new kind of dish, like a French dish, and then goes to the store and makes it. And it's like four in the morning, but he's eating this like delicious dish. And he's like, yo, this is an amazing feeling. And finally it's like seven a.m. and Eddie finally goes to sleep but when he wakes up it's afternoon and he's crashed hard he's like oh, I feel like mm, shit right. this is terrible so his mind is groggy went up but he takes the chapters to his editor and leaves them with her and she's a little skeptical because she's like what you all of a sudden just poured out like three or four chapters in one day after giving me nothing for a year he then calls Lindy and is like yo I wrote a few chapters it was great like all of a sudden I was feeling so great and she's also skeptical because it's only been a few days and he, she's like look I'll meet you on Saturday we'll go to a nice restaurant we'll have a date and you can show me what you've got and he's like deal I'll be there so you know uh, that all sounds really and he she's like hopeful she's like I really hope you get it together Eddie so Eddie's editor calls almost immediately and is like yo these chapters are great and these reworks are brilliant like you got to give me some more chapters this is great but Eddie's like okay I'll see what I can do and he knows that he like sits down and he can't write without this motivation without this NZT but he's like I don't want to go back to Vern so he tries to write a few pages can't get anything out so he's like I got to get more of that motivation so he goes back to Vern and basically, er- Vern's got him by the by the the balls. He's like, "You'll do anything for one of these pills." So he goes out, does some errands for Vern, comes back only to find Eddie's been murdered. But oh, or that Vern has been, been murdered. murdered, and Eddie finds the stash well, before the cops come in, and and it's it's all good. But Eddie notices he's being followed some by someone. Also, there's way less pills. I'm talking like maybe oh, okay. maybe yeah, like ten yeah. pills. So right. back in his apartment, Eddie takes the pill and has another another surge of motivation, and he writes even more, and he even starts to learn a little French, which he used to take in college, and he's, like, feeling great. And the next day passes, and Eddie's still feeling good. He takes another pill. So, like, a week passes. It's, like, Friday. <clears throat> and Eddie's finished the book, and he hands it to, the, to his editor. He's, like, boom. But Eddie gets accosted by some thugs who beat the shit out of him because they want to know where the NZT is. So now Eddie's like, it's Friday night. Eddie's feeling like shit. He's been taking NZT for five days in a row. And he's like, I got to figure it out. And he's like beat up and he takes another pill on Saturday morning, but he starts to lose time. And he thinks he might have a head injury from the fight. So he's like, I'll go to the hospital, but he never makes it to the hospital. Instead, he spends basically the next 48 hours wandering through life. All of a sudden finding himself in different situations, finds himself at a club. And the next minute he's dancing with a beautiful girl and the next he's having sex with her. And then he's in a swimming pool in the morning with different people and then snorting cocaine and then in a helicopter, but none of it ties together. Okay. And, and so Monday morning things start to settle down and Eddie, Eddie finally comes to, and he finds himself on a beach in New Jersey, just fell asleep on a beach in New Jersey. (laughs) And he makes his way back to New York only to find Lindy is pissed that she bailed on her. It's Monday morning and they were supposed to have a date on Saturday. He missed it. He missed his date with her. But she's waiting at the apartment because she still has the keys. She never gave them back. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, you look like shit, but your apartment is clean 
and there's like food in the fridge and she's like i don't know what's going on eddie's editor two shows up and she's like the pages are great but like the 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 more recent ones the one that you gave me more recently are like incoherent and she's like eddie i want you to to think about going to see like a shrink because it sounds like you might be bipolar or you're too much stress and and lindy's like i don't think it's bipolar i think he's addicted to drugs that's what these episodes are it sounds right. to me like yeah yeah and Eddie's like, well, he knows that it's NZT, but he's not going to tell them. So he and he, Lindy helps him get better, and he lets her think that he's detoxing. He's crashing, but he lets her think that he's detoxing, and he's only got one pill left. And after a few days, he's like, okay, I'm going to take this pill. I got to figure out what this is. So he takes it to a lab, but he gets accosted on the on his way there, and the dudes tell them that if he wants more, he must be running out. They'll have to buy it from him and for a lot of money. So meanwhile, Eddie can't focus. He's like, I need the NZ. I, I, I can't get any pages done. It's not working. And he's like, I can't, I'm blaming the pill. And he's blaming Lindy. And he's like, my editor's on me about pressure. And now she wants me to see a shrink. And everybody's just got to lay off. Like, I just need to relax. That's what I need the pill for. It's going to help motivate me. So he finally gets a call from the lab. And they're like, yo, is this a joke? Because this is just a caffeine pill. <laughs> and he's like, no. And he finds the gangsters. And he steals Lindy's credit card. And pays them a bunch of money to take to get pills, so a bunch of pills. And he takes one to the lab, and the tech finds the same result. It's just um, a caffeine it's pill. Just caffeine. But he starts yeah. taking them again, and he's got this motivation and whatnot. So he's like, something's going going weird here. So she's like, she figures out that he's stolen the money, and so she's like, you got to go to rehab, and takes him to re- rehab. But he doesn't want to be in rehab, and and she's like, I'm breaking up with you, but I want to make sure you get better. And he's like, I don't, I don't need this shit. Like now you're breaking up with me, and you like everything's going to shit now. Like it's it's not my fault. And Eddie is now in rehab and recovering, but he wants to feel that rush again, so he gets out, like gets out of um of rehab, goes and finds the gangsters again, and and is like, um. You know, he's like, I'll do anything to get more NZT. I'll even hold, keep your secret. And um, the gangsters are like, no, 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 no. And they take him to the leader, to their leader, like sort of a kingpin or whatever you want to call him. And he's like, I know the secret. I know that like you've been cutting the NZT with caffeine pills, right? Which means like okay, you're yeah, trying yeah. to get more money for something. But I know what's happening. You're trying to cut. And, and the boss is like, okay, all right, hold on. And he shoos some of the, the lesser thugs out. And he basically goes... Okay, so NZT isn't real. It's a placebo. It's just a caffeine pill <laughs> that we've been telling people is a miracle drug so that they believe it works. That's why sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work. But it's the perfect con because we're selling an illegal drug that's totally legal. Right. But we've created a market for it. It's just a caffeine pill that we gave good marketing and you believed it and that's why it worked. So all of the, oh, that's the crash, interesting. all of the yeah. crash that you've been feeling that crash is just probably because it's you didn't a sleep crash. You just didn't sleep, yeah. right? You were up until yeah, seven yeah, in the yeah. morning. You didn't sleep that hallucinate. Like when you were losing time that whole weekend, that was because you were like also on cocaine, but it's because you were hallucinating due to lack of sleep. You'd been on the pill for five days, right? Right. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. you, you're not addicted to NZT. You're addicted to caffeine pills. And Eddie is sort of left there realizing that he's made a shithole out of his life by blaming other people when he's been addicted to to caffeine pills that don't even give him the motivation. The motivation was something he had the whole time. He just couldn't get right. to it without without believing in himself through this placebo effect or nocebo effect, whatever it is. Right, right. And now he's like left there with this gangster sort of like. I don't know. Like now that I know the secret, are they going to kill me or am I basically like in their debt from now on and that's the end nice nice ah that's good yeah i, re- I like I really, the twist i really wanted to play with this idea that like the motivation comes from like he can't get his shit together but he blames everyone but himself yeah because it because it that kind of makes sense too because the the movie i do think that's one thing that the movie was lacking was a little bit more of that sort of introspection yeah because i do because it's sort of a question of like okay well what what kind of who who would be a character who would be really a drawn to this and then would would stick to it and what like what do they learn about themselves in the process? In the what process, sort of, yeah. How does that compromise their values and because because I do think that understand the, about the, themselves in the movie the the whole idea like that he takes NZT once you stop taking it your brain basically deteriorates right you can't focus on anything I do think that was a good motivator for keep to keep taking it but I actually think it would have been more interesting if if like if he takes it and you keep everything that you've learned once you've taken it 
but it's the addiction to being that smart and being able to learn that keeps Eddie going back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because otherwise we just sort of wind up with this this movie where he's like, well, I have to keep taking it because otherwise I'll my brain will rot. But it's like, what if the the there's an actual addiction to learning that much, to being that powerful? You know what I mean? To be to yeah, to, it, to like it, the actual the actual crux of the movie is about you know I said it was sort of this male fantasy this take this take this pill and now all of a sudden you're like the the greatest man in the world but you have to keep taking it which means you're addicted to your own insecurities almost yeah it's like it's like the high is sort of the power yeah. um and that 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 high you gets off of being perceived as like godlike in other people's eyes yeah yeah I don't know it was uh I just I mean I think this movie is smart I just think there was a couple things in there where I like, especially that skate thing that really brought me out of it. But, um, I would, yeah, yeah, that's, fair. I think I was also, also a little disappointed because everyone was like, yo, this movie's so brilliant and, and it, it was smart, but it wasn't as smart as I was hoping it would be. And maybe that's why my disappointment comes across. Yeah. I, I, I think it's, yeah, I, I, I had fun watching it. I think it's, I do think it's entertaining and I think some of the visuals are very interesting. I think some, I do think that kind of that infinite zoom effect for yeah. the first like five seconds is really cool. <laughs> um, you know, things like that are very interesting. Um, but you're right. There's, there's something where it feels like there's kind of this, there are a bunch of ideas and it's just, there's like something that's not quite having them all like they belong in the we same. Need, we movie. need like a through line theme to keep. Yeah. Everything together. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's this kind of, I think we were both disappointed by the fact that he kind of goes through this whole ordeal and doesn't seem to learn anything. No, he's he the smartest gets guy. Away with he, it. he gets away with it. And yeah. now he's the smartest guy. And there's, it doesn't feel like there's any consequences. We watched, you know, they, we often talk about like, um, Joseph Campbell's the, the, um, the uh, hero's journey the hero's journey or the right? hero with a thousand faces yeah what was given up it feels like he didn't give anything up because at the end he has right. it all i mean yeah he, yeah he even exactly. has lindy he even has lindy back that's right yeah exactly i feel like i because i think i think there's some kind of feeling it, it sets up like it, it really does set up that there's going to be some kind of a fall Mm. like right at the beginning like, like okay he's be. about to jump off the building okay there's a reversal but even then after that point you're like yeah but he's he, there's no way he's gonna get get off with like yeah. get away with this there's yeah. no way and yet and then in the end it's like yeah i'm i'm motherfucking president fuck you, you robert know, soon, de niro so yeah <laughs> yeah where can people find you uh i have a website it's uh as www.nathanieldraper.com nice. i'm also on letterboxd at draper nate yeah. um yeah my band just released well, my band just released the first single from our brand new album astral migration so you can check out cosmic orphan over on the robot philosopher channel and anywhere you listen to music that'll be out on in may on may 6th and you can check out our other channel the cinemasters for more scripted content but thanks for chilling with us limitless that was actually yeah. despite my initial disappointment i do think this was a smarter movie if i had to watch it again i think i would be like oh, okay i know what i'm in for and i would enjoy it more yeah, it's it's fun. Yeah. You know, it's a fun movie, I think. But yeah, but thanks for listening. Yeah. This was this was good. Peace out. All right, bye. <laughs>